Hey guys, welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how I remade our pirate costumes for the skeletons for the front yard. So this shirt um, that I'm putting on this first skeleton was actually originally our captain shirt, um, but I decided to move it to the skeleton in the tree because it has a speaker um, in the chest of the skeleton. Um, that Ryan actually just installed, uh, I think this year. I don't remember if it was in it last year. Um, I think he redid it at the end of the last season. Um, so it would be ready for this year. And I think it came out really cool. Um, but we kind of want to disguise it just a little bit so it's not as obvious uh, being in the chest. So we decided to put a shirt on him. And I decided to use this shirt um, just because I decided the captain was going to need a new shirt that I just made completely um, new. And so what I'm doing here is just kind of tightening it up around the shoulders and the sleeve um, area uh, under the armpit area just to give it a little bit more definition in the arms because I kind of want him to look like he's decayed. Um, from a regular size, average size uh, human, um, rather than looking like he lost like 500 pounds. So um, just kind of loosening it up, straightening it out, making it have a little bit more structure um, because we get so many high winds here in um, Vegas area that uh, I don't really want it to move around too much. I kind of want it to stay in place. So, um, so like this collar area, I just actually sewed it directly um, around the collar of the skeleton. I uh, couldn't think of what it was called, but the collar is attached to the collarbone of the skeleton. Um, and then I also just took a little piece of thread and tightened up the button area um, and then adding a little bit more definition just like uh, I don't know I feel like sometimes I do to some of my shirts or dresses uh, I kind of pinched the back and uh, sewed that together um, to give it a little bit more of a waist definition Oh, so here I started cutting out a spot for Ryan to put um, the wires through to access the back panel of the speaker. Um, and then I just burnt the edges of the fabric um, so that it didn't fray too much more and it just kind of stayed in that area. Then I went ahead and started distressing the rest of the shirt. I originally was going to go ahead and stain this shirt, but it's a type of polyester, so I really didn't think a stain or... Um, a dye would uh, really work on it so I just decided to burn a bunch of holes in it <laughs> um, and then I took uh, some leather from like a leather strap bag or like a craft bag and um, just put it into the button hole which were originally button holes or rivet holes uh, of the shirt and gave it a cool look and feel to it uh, so this is our captain and here I am making a pattern um, for his shirt um, and what will eventually be his vest. Um, my initial thought was to make the shirt with a collar which is why I had those triangles but I decided to skip that um, altogether once I started putting it together and once again I am horrible at um, making sure I have seam allowances on my pattern pieces. I, I need to just learn to cut bigger than um, my actual pattern piece because I always screw that up and I always make, end up making things a little bit smaller than um, I first intended. So I actually made this shirt out of an old sheet that I had lying around. So um, as far as aging it or coloring it, I really didn't have to do too much more. I still will do a little bit um, but I won't have to uh, put like a real harsh dye or anything on it. Um, and here I'm just making a quick sleeve. Um, I actually end up deciding a little bit later that instead of a straight sleeve, I want more of what they call a bishop sleeve. Um, and I'll go ahead and insert that look here. Um, and I screwed up to begin with because I didn't make the sleeve long enough or actually sorry wide enough for that bishop sleeve 
to um, be able to be obtained. Um, I just made it way too narrow for the hand was not going to fit through it and it just wasn't going to have that billowy look that I want. Um, so I ended up adding a couple extra panels of fabric to the sleeve to um, give it a little bit more uh, fabric so I could work with it. And here I am testing how fast the sheet was going to burn and it burnt very, very quickly. Um, so here is where I'm making the um, bishop sleeve cut. Uh, as you can see, I um, went ahead and did that on both sides so it was sort of kind of even. And what was really cool about this project was I didn't have to be perfect. Like, definitely things are not ironed all the way flat. Um, if I screwed up, it was fine. It, the seams didn't have to be in the exact place and they didn't have to have these beautiful fin finishes. But I actually was able to take this time and, you know, um, tried a couple different techniques and, and just practice a couple of things just so that um, I had the practice and like I said it didn't have to be perfect because the whole thing is it's a pirate and it's gonna be messy and dirty and not even anyway um, so that kind of made this project a lot funner <laughs> funner is not the right word but it was a, it was a lot more enjoyable for me to do because I wasn't stressing about making things perfect um, and in fact I was deliberately trying to make them unperfect um, but in some ways that also screwed me up because then I was trying to make it unperfect in the most perfect way <laughs> if that makes any sense um, anyway I basically just I wasn't stressed about this project which is awesome um, I just wanted to get it done. That was the most stressful part. Uh, anyway, so this is me dressing the captain. And again, because it didn't have to be perfect, I made it a little bit too tight. So when I went to go put it on him, um, it actually ended up ripping <laughs> quite a bit right down the front. But that's all right, because it's not supposed to be perfect. And I want to have all those rips and tears in it. Um, so the, with the bishop sleeve, I ended up just tying the ends together instead of where traditionally you would add like elastic or something to give it more billowy look. Um, but I thought the ties looked a lot better. And again, because the edge is didn't need to be finished, um, it just gave it a really fun look. Um, and that big rip that I ended up getting, um, I just, again, just sewed it directly to the rib cage. So here I'm taking one of Ryan's old shirts uh, and making the pirate captain vest. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and insert my inspiration photo here um, that I found on Pinterest. Um, and this is kind of what I was basing this whole captain look off of. Um, the vest originally I was going to keep these two large panels and just have it kind of slide open. Um, but I decided based on the inspiration photo to make the front of the vest a little bit thinner um, and I ended up doubling over the front of the vest as I'm doing here before attaching it to the back. So once I started um, laying it down and getting it where I wanted on the top, um, I, on the sides I went ahead and trimmed it down so it was a little bit slimmer and so that I had um, a nice wide gap um, on the side. Again, based on the inspiration photo, I wanted it to be real loose. Um, it didn't have to be real tight. Again, we were wanting it to have like a decayed type look um, without being overtly um, like crazy big on the skeleton. So then I went ahead and attached the two front pieces and we had a vest. So these jeans I actually found, um, when Ryan and I went to go pick up another piece, 
um, for the yard display that was free and they were getting rid of um, some clothes and I found these jeans in there and they're kind of the perfect size for my skeleton. Um, I ended up rolling the cuffs um, of the legs a little bit but the color just wasn't quite right. They were just, they just were too clean looking. So we went, I went ahead and aged them up with some acrylic paint and water. And uh, the darker spots you can see there are just acrylic and paint, acrylic paint and water. Um, and my first go around where um, the most of it is actually, I even added more and more water to it. Um, and this definitely would have been way easier if I had just like dipped the jeans in like watered down paint, um, like in a bucket or something. Totally would have been easier, probably a little bit faster, but um, this gave me a little bit more control of the way I wanted things to look and like I didn't have to dip the whole thing and it dried pretty much overnight instead of a couple of days or anything like that. It went. Um, relatively quickly. Now I did hand sew the um, waist a little bit um, just to make sure that it didn't come off of the hips of the skeleton. Um, and I also went through and added that darker color just a little bit, some splatters, just basically anywhere where the skeleton would have worn through um, the pants on a regular basis. That's quite the angle there, sir. My goodness. Uh, <laughs> so just me aging a little bit more and making it look really cool. I think the pants came out really great and for a free pair of pants that were just going to be hanging out on the side of the road, pretty good deal. So here I am actually doing more aging to the clothes. So the shirt was again made out of that um, sheet material. So I took um, actually a coffee and water mixture and put in a spray bottle and um, sprayed that all over the shirt and then went through with the uh, dark panel and um, sorry, the dark uh, paint. And then um, I tried to, uh, like a dummy, <laughs> um, set that on fire. It's not going to set on fire because it's wet. So I had to let that dry. So I just moved over to the other side and I laid down um, the pants and started to burn those. And then, um, again, I was having a hard time getting anything to catch. And then Ryan made a really good point where I should just be making the holes first and then setting those on fire because then you're just getting the edges um, burnt of all the places that you want burnt. So I went ahead and did that. So thanks for the suggestion, Ryan. Um, it made things go a lot faster and I had a little bit more control about like where things were getting burnt. Um, another really important detail here is I held that bottle of watered down coffee with me um, and I sprayed down the areas and the surrounding areas of the places where I singed and burned all um, those pants and I was in a well ventilated area. I was in our shop with the fan going and um, if you know our shop, our shop is nice wide open and had a nice bucket of water on the side as well. So being completely safe, um, well trying to be completely safe uh, while doing something like this and it's definitely not something I suggest doing. Uh, without some sort of supervision and or help. I had Ryan on standby, so thank goodness for that. Uh, um, but so this is me adding all that singeing and burning and um, you know, carefully making sure. And it was cool about using the coffee um, water as my uh, kind of safety water was I was able to get a little bit of that tinge um, around the edges of the, the fire as well. Um, and then I just went through and added a little bit more detail on the hands and um, the face and even the chest uh, area. I added a little bit of that watered down acrylic paint um, from the spray bottle again. So there's a little bit of a up close shot. I see, I think it came out pretty good. Looks really awesome. And then I let it sit overnight and then we got him dressed. And we put them out in the yard. Thanks, Captain. Looking good. A little bit of a back shot.
So here is our speaker pirate. He hangs out on the side of the yard in the tree with all the chains. He's got a peg leg. Those are the pants that Ryan made a few years ago. They still have held up really, really well. And then our captain sitting on our pile of gold. So if you watched our last vlog, Ryan talks about um, the boots that we found uh, that the captain is wearing here. Uh, it's great, again, from that same pile of clothes that the pants came from boot and then Ryan filled it with spray foam stuck the foot in there and it fits perfectly and I think he came out great I think he still needs a hat so we're still on the lookout for a good hat that we might need to age up but he is looking amazing I think it came out better than expected and I'm super excited so thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe Bye.